Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. So while the market is in free fall, and that would be the traditional markets and our markets right now as we're down 2 or 3% or whatever else it is, let's focus on something that we can take a look at and really dig into, the SEC. So today, I found this interesting because I didn't really expect this to where the SEC is going. And this is actually coming out of South Korea. There is Korean Blockchain Week, and there was a fireside chat, and it was with uh, one of the commissioners, Mark Ueda. And he sat down and he talked about how the SEC, and I couldn't believe it, I was reading this, SEC should create a customized S1 forms for digital asset security. So I had to ask myself, first of all, who's Mark and why does this make a difference? So if you don't know Mark, I didn't know him myself, but Mark he is an American attorney and government official, member of the Republican Party, served as a commissioner of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission since 2022, and he's going to be on the SEC for quite some time. So the things that he's going to talk about and relay to his other commissioners is going to carry weight. And I'm glad that he's actually gonna be there because guess what? He's on our side, kinda, and I'll get into that. So what he's talking about as far as these S1 forms, it's the registration statement from the SEC that US issuers must file prior to offering a new securities product. It includes various disclosures, which Gary Gensler is big on, such as an income statement, a statement of cash flows, which of course he's trying to protect us, protect us harder, Gary, and all that good stuff. And he asked this question, why shouldn't we do the same thing with crypto and digital assets secure as securities? We have the flexibility to do that. And that was in part expressing my frustration and that we do or we have not done more of that to accommodate sponsors of these type of digital assets that have concluded as securities. And it's a very funny thing because first of all, I can't believe that. Well, actually, I can believe what he's saying because I believe he was one and actually Hester Pierce that actually voted for the Bitcoin ETF to go through and the other, uh, and it was actually Gary Gensler as the tying vote because the other two commissioners said no. So the way that's actually on our side, but who is not on our side, and this is just, I'm just kind of giving you context just as how difficult the SEC has been. I mean, we know it's been difficult, right? Gary hasn't really given an inch. He's gone on to put out major lawsuits against uh, some of these, uh, a lot of these centralized exchanges and continues to lose. And even though he loses, he still wins because guess who's putting the foot in the trek? It is us, the uh, American taxpayer. But I was running across some of my old posts and I cannot believe how stubborn and how bullheaded this or pigheaded this guy actually has been. And it was, it was a post from 2023. This is last year. This is over a year ago. And it talked about how Robinhood markets, Robinhood, the uh, exchange app, of course, we can, we can deal with securities called stocks, and you can also deal with uh, uh, cryptos and digital assets on Robinhood. But their chief compliance lawyer, Dan Gallagher, who was a former SEC commissioner and has spent his career in securities and corporate law, even him and his ability and the people that he knew could not get Robinhood into crypto compliance, and they tried for 16 months. These are the stories that I forget about because it's been so long and I'm like, is this guy ever gonna stop? No, he's not. And then if, if we take a look at like the broader range, cause I understand that America is not the epicenter of everything, even though I tend to believe it is cause I'm an American, but this is from a post from Metal Lawman. And he says, congratulations to Qatar and all the other countries that have established regulatory framework for digital assets. We don't have that. He goes, what we do have is a 1946 Supreme Court case about orange groves and a, <laughs> and a guy who invented the term digital asset security. And this is actually from Watcher Guru. Looks like Qatar actually introduces regulatory clarity. And of course, this is with a host of other countries. I believe uh, parts of the EU actually have it, Southeast Asia. I want to say that Russia actually has regulatory clarity and we don't. It's amazing to me. We're in America, probably the most powerful country in the entire world. But yet we just kind of cannot get regulatory clarity for some reason. Anyhow, moving on. The term crypto asset security is nowhere to be found in any statute. It's a fabricated term with no legal basis. The SEC needs to stop trying to deceive judges by using that term. And of course, they've been doing that quite well as time has gone on. Thankfully, some of the judges who have stepped forth and said, hey, this makes absolutely no sense. And that's why Ripple has won their case. But when asked about his, and this is the part, so we know that Mark is for us. He looks like he wants to move forward and wants to get regulatory clarity, him and Hester Pierce. But there's some things that you have to know. And we're, we're going to talk about all five of the, of the commissioners so we get a really good understanding of who they are, how long they're going to serve, and where they actually stand. But when he was asked about his dissent to the SEC's decision to deny Coinbase's ruling petition, 
the way to say the SEC should clarify what securities are and are not in digital assets. If you're not familiar, because I actually forgot about this myself, this was actually a memorandum from Coinbase. And they essentially asked the SEC, and it's amazing, they're actually begging the SEC, like, look, we'll do what you want, just give us some clarity. And this was back two years ago. And they said, look, we're filing a petition with the OCSC requesting that the commission propose and adopt rules to govern the regulation of securities that are offered and traded via digitally native methods, including such and such and so forth. The reason why I read this to you and I talk about this is because when you're talking to other people and you're trying to orange pill them or get them into some crazy altcoin that you're into, don't worry, I'm the same way, that they're going to say, ah, but you know, they're, they're trying to uh, escape law and it's, and, and it's, it's all for terrorism and it, it's all for uh, destructive purposes and they're, you know, they're, they're bypassing everything. That's not true. We are trying to ask the people in charge, give us the clarity, give us the forms and the rules, and we will go and comply. But if you don't give us anything, it leads us into a path of destruction. And the problem with not giving us clarity is that different altcoins, different projects, different centralized exchanges run amok while you're playing footsie with them. I didn't, need not remind you with Gary Gensler and SBF and FTX. If it wasn't for his role in that and sidestepping everything, I don't think we would have had a collapse of FTX. We wouldn't have had those issues if they just would have given clarity and taken a look and actually done their job. So if anybody's here who is, is guilty, and I hate to say this, but it's actually Gary Gensler. So finishing up here, he states, uh, I hope at some point, whether it's Gensler or any of, us, of his successors, will think about, we've now had a fair amount of regulatory uncertainty on digital assets. Maybe we ought to move forward with some legislation or rulemaking. Again, this is made in public at Korean Blockchain Week. However, and this is a big however, digital assets are not among the over 50 items SEC Chairman Gary Gensler added to the regulatory agenda during his term. Weta added that Gensler has the final say in adding new items. Weta, one of the SEC's five commissioners, has a fixed term until June 2028. And that got me thinking about things. So Mark's going to be here for quite some time. It looks like, for the most part, he's pretty much on our side. And I like that. I can appreciate that. I can get behind that. But who, about, who are the other ones? Well, I think we already know Gary, right? He's the commissioner. He's been there since 2021. And his term actually expires in 2026. And the question you might have is, well, when Trump gets in, he can fire him. Not so fast. That's not true. And we'll get to that in a second. And then, of course, everybody knows crypto mom, Hester Pierce, doing a fine job trying to stand up and work for what's right. Unfortunately, she keeps getting beat down <laughs> because she's in the minority. There's Carolyn Cranshaw, and then Mark, we just talked about, and Jaime Lizarraga. And he's the commissioner since 2022. And I'm taking a look at it. Mark's there till 2028. Jaime is there till 2027. Who the heck is that guy? He is not a fan of ours. And I'm just going to tell you, I don't know his stance, but this one sentence kind of pretty much sums it up. Commissioner Lizarraga mostly or most recently served as senior advisor to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. That's all you got to know. <laughs> He's not going to go for us. I mean, he'd be great for stock tips, but that's about it. But then the other one, Carolyn Crenshaw, is quite an interesting individual. And did you know she shouldn't even be there? Here's what she is. I have to tell you, she's got a pretty good resume. She served as career SEC staff attorney in the Division of Examinations. She served as counsel to Commissioner Kara Stein and Robert Jackson, focusing on strengthening investor protections in our increasingly complex markets. Sounds like a Gary Gensler type of person. That's fine. Hey, you want to protect people? I'm good with that. Serves as captain of the United States Army Reserve and JAG. I can respect that. I like veterans. Practiced law in the Washington, D.C. office of Sutherland, Asbel and Brennan LLP at Sutherland. She represented public companies. Let me say this again. She represented public companies, broker dealers, and investment advisors on complex securities law investigations and enforcement matters. So if anybody knows the loopholes, it would probably be Caroline. And I'm not saying that she's bad or good or whatever else, but I'm just telling you, if you're a hammer, or if, <laughs> if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And if she's been there and actually has defended those broker dealers and the people that are insiders, she knows all the tricks. So probably she looks at this and goes, this is nothing but fraud and scams. Got you, understand. But the crazy thing about her is that you may notice here, her term expires 2024. And did you know she was supposed to be out of there as of, well, actually, as of May, end of May 
This is from a post from Cointelegraph, anti-crypto SEC commissioner's term is up in 41 days. Will she be replaced? And what this really comes down to is that if the Biden administration wants to keep her there, they just keep her there. And that's exactly what's going on. So I see some of the keys here could fall. And I understand that if she gets replaced and Gensler gets replaced, I think we'll be in a pretty good place and we'll have regulatory clarity, which is what we all want. And I know people say, well, who cares? Because crypto is inevitable. You're absolutely right. You're 100% correct. However, it will allow us to do things faster instead of sitting on our hands and just getting sued by this guy, Gensler. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. But the last thing I'll say, and I alluded to this earlier, what about Trump? Couldn't he just fire Gensler? No, he can't. So the thing is, the commissioner, SEC, the head of, of the SEC, Gary Gensler, is appointed by the president, and that would be President Joe Biden, who I don't even know if he's the president right now. I have no idea what's going on with that. But uh, you can't just fire somebody as, as far as the SEC. However, how it works is this. So I understand that Trump made a promise in Nashville, Tennessee, and like I told you, politicians will make many promises. But the reality check is this, the SEC chairs cannot be fired by the president. However, the SEC chairs actually normally resign if there's a change in the White House during their term, leaving a spot open for the new White House can appoint a leader. And if we take a look at the history, going all the way back to 1934, we can say that when there are new presidents, especially for different parties, the left being the Democrats and the right being the Republicans, which is why I had that little goofy thing on my thumbnail, they actually step down. So wherever you're at in here, and I don't know who you're going to vote for, because that's up to you. But if this does happen, I'm pretty sure Gary Gens is going to step aside. Who wants to be bamboozled for the next four years or until he gets out in 2026 when he steps down? He will probably step down, let somebody else take over. And we just took a look at Crenshaw. So I think that will be the direction that the SEC goes right now. However, it is par for the course, and they will continue on that same line. So expect more lawsuits, expect more litigation, and expect more problems from the SEC as they slow down progress and everything in between. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And uh, to finish up, I, um, I want to tell you guys about a little project called Velos. And I can't really tell you what it is. I'm not allowed to. But right now, there's a link in the description. And it'll take you to our Telegram group. And all you're going to do is just earn some points. And I can't believe we're doing this, but... It just says right here, tired of VCs getting all the great deals. Essentially what it comes down to is the same deals that I get, you're going to get. And that's all I can tell you, unfortunately. So there's a link in the description. Go to the Telegram group. You'll see the clues. You'll figure it out. I'll be talking about this for the next three or four months. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, and I see a lot of questions right now. If you'd like to go over some questions, do a little Q&A. I'll answer your questions the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. But if you got to take off, take off. Enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate you coming by, talking shop with me and the SEC and me getting on my soapbox.